I used to have the most stable, comfortable job. I was a tenured professor of engineering at the University of Southern California. But now, I'm just a battery guy. Let me tell you why. I spent most of my academic career trying to understand climate change, trying to convince people that man-made climate change was real. Our endless access to energy by burning fossil fuels has never really existed without some concern for how it might affect our future. First, it was air pollution in our cities. Then it was peak oil and other resource constraints. And now it's carbon dioxide buildup in our atmosphere, ocean acidification, catastrophic climate change. This access to energy has also facilitated an incredible lifestyle, one that has spread through much of the world, one that I personally love. And the opportunity to innovate and lead into a new era of energy production and energy storage is exciting. So I left academia, I went to business school, and I started a battery company called Dragonfly Energy. Why a battery company? I'll come back to that. Our energy consumption is generally split into four areas. Transportation, residential, commercial, and industrial usage. And we as a society have made a clear choice. We are focusing our evolution on transportation. Tesla, NEO, BYD, Lucid Motors, Rivian. The list is long, the investments are massive, The valuations are astronomical. The cars are beautiful and the competition is fierce. The electrification of transportation is truly upon us now. And the technology making all of this possible is the lithium-ion battery, the same battery that enabled the proliferation of cell phones and laptops. So are we now finally dramatically changing the rate at which we are burning fossil fuels? If you replace your gas guzzler with an electric vehicle, have you changed your carbon footprint? Well, the answer to that question depends on whether you have a large solar array or wind turbine at your home. Because when you plug in to charge that lithium-ion battery, that energy is coming from the electric grid, a grid that is already stressed, as evidenced by all too frequent power outages, whether from a cold snap in Texas or a heat wave in California. Currently, only about 10% of electricity generated in the U.S. comes from solar and wind. And it's not the cost of these renewable energy sources that's the limiting factor. It's actually their intermittency that makes it difficult to incorporate more onto the grid. Solar intensity varies with cloud cover and wind pat- weather patterns. Wind comes and goes with weather patterns. What the grid needs is a lot more energy storage to accommodate this intermittency. The American grid delivers about 12 billion kilowatt hours of electricity every day. If we were to electrify our transportation system, that would add another 20 billion kilowatt hours every day. Where is that energy going to come from? More gas, more coal? Hopefully not. That would pretty much defeat the purpose and ensure our continuing course towards uncontrolled climate change. More nuclear? Events like Fukushima and Chernobyl continue to give the world pause on the rapid expansion of nuclear. The energy should come from more solar and wind. In the entire world, humans use about 24 billion kilowatts of power on average. But the sun delivers over 100,000 billion kilowatts of power to Earth. So solar and wind present the greatest opportunity. But what we need is an energy buffer to accommodate the intermittency. The grid needs a lot more energy storage, billions of kilowatt hours of energy storage. Some energy storage is actually pretty cheap. Pumped hydro, pumping water to a higher elevation when the sun is shining, letting it fall back down when it's not. An elegant solution, but not very energy dense. 
that means it has to be a large system. So it's not widely implementable. Molten salt, using the sun to melt salt at a high temperature, extracting the heat back out when the sun is not shining. Again, an elegant solution, but not widely implementable. What if we could develop a widely implementable storage solution, one that could be deployed in every home, in every building connected to the grid? Three requirements are necessary for such a solution. First, it needs to be energy dense enough so that it doesn't take up too much space or weight. Second, it needs to be cost effective over its lifetime to make financial sense, at least when compared to the cost of burning fossil fuels. For a battery, that means it needs to last many charge and discharge cycles, thousands of cycles. One lithium ion battery technology that has made progress in this area is the lithium iron phosphate chemistry. Not quite as energy dense as the lithium ion batteries you'll find in most electric vehicles, but good enough and inexpensive enough that it's often considered a cheaper alternative for electric vehicles. Even Tesla is considering lithium iron phosphate for its Model 3. And the final requirement, and this is the hard one, it needs to be non-flammable. Lithium ion batteries don't have a great track record here. For transportation, we're used to large tanks of gasoline, so some flammability is not unacceptable. But for grid storage, the bar is a lot higher. LG, one of the world's largest manufacturers of lithium ion batteries, recalled its home storage solution because of flammability risk. A lithium iron phosphate storage installation in China caught fire in Beijing, and two firefighters died fighting that fire. Clearly, something needs to be tweaked. At Dragonfly Energy, we make smaller scale lithium iron phosphate storage systems, generally for boats, RVs, smaller off-grid installations. Our customers have learned how to live off of the sun. Many RVers and van lifers, and this may sound counterintuitive, have a remarkably small carbon footprint. They have solar panels on their roofs, they park somewhere nice, and they boondock. That means that they basically live off grid. They size their solar systems, take into account the energy usage of their appliances, their hair dryers, microwave ovens, induction cooktops, air conditioners. It's not really that different from a stationary home. Maybe take into account their latitude, and they live. Hike, bike, work. Some were beautiful, some were far off grid. They are demonstrating on a small scale that it's possible to affordably live off of intermittent sources of energy with lithium ion batteries. We know that this is not only possible, but this is the future of the electric grid. But let's get back to that last sticking point. What makes a lithium ion battery so flammable? It's not the lithium. It's not the cathode or the positive side of the battery. It's not the anode or the negative side of the battery. It's actually the liquid electrolyte in the battery that allows the lithium ion to travel back and forth between the anode and the cathode as the battery charges and discharges. That liquid happens to react violently with oxygen. What we have been working on is a lithium iron phosphate battery that has an electrolyte that is not flammable, that is not even liquid. The so-called solid-state electrolyte has been considered kind of a holy grail in battery science, but not for grid storage. Until recently, battery advancement has been focused on electric vehicles, but the needs of that application are completely different. Long range on a charge, 15-minute charge times. Lithium iron phosphate doesn't compete well on these metrics, but it does compete well on the cost metric. And if the electrolyte is solid, then it also competes well on the safety metric. For the last five years, the R&D department at Dragonfly Energy 
has been developing the processes necessary to make such a battery. Our patented processes have enabled a viable solution to the mass manufacture of a grid storage battery. When we bring this battery to market, it will revolutionize how we harness the power of our renewables. That means it will be safe, non-flammable, and cost-effective enough for mass deployment. Electric vehicles are happening now. That has never been clearer. But burning more fossil fuels to charge electric vehicle batteries is a great and tragic example of one step forward, one step back. What should be a great advancement for society could potentially do more damage than good by overloading the grid and propelling climate change to a point where we may not be able to recover from. But if we deploy the right battery for grid storage, then we will truly have the best of both worlds. Thank you.